In this video, you'll learn the 10 essential API security measures that will protect your applications from the most common and devastating attacks. These aren't theoretical concepts. They're battle-tested techniques used by companies handling millions of requests daily. Master these 10 measures and you'll block the vast majority of attacks before they ever reach your data. Here's why this matters. In 2025, 84% of organizations experienced at least one API security incident. That's an all-time high. API calls now make up 71% of all web traffic. And according to Gartner, API breaches leak 10 times more data than average security breaches. In May 2024 alone, Dell lost 49 million customer records through a single API vulnerability. Yet only 13% of organizations can prevent more than half of API attacks. Every API you build is a door into your system. Every public endpoint is an attack surface. Every parameter is a potential injection point. Every missing check is an invitation. The good news, API security isn't magic. Here are the 10 measures we'll cover. HTTPS encryption, authentication, authorization, rate limiting, input validation, injection prevention, cores, CSRF protection, XSS prevention, and security headers. Skip any of these and you're leaving doors unlocked. Master all of them and you've built a fortress. Let's start with the foundation of all secure communication. API Security Measure 1, HTTPS and TLS. Before anything else, encrypt your traffic. HTTPS wraps every request and response in TLS encryption. Without it, Anyone on the network can read your data in plain text. Passwords, API keys, personal information, all visible to anyone running a packet sniffer. Coffee shop Wi-Fi becomes a gold mine for attackers. TLS creates an encrypted tunnel between client and server. Even if someone intercepts the traffic, they see only gibberish. Modern TLS 1.3 is fast enough that there's no performance excuse to skip it. Certificate authorities verify your server's identity, preventing man-in-the-middle attacks where attackers impersonate your API. Here's the critical rule. Never send sensitive data over HTTP. Not in development, not in testing, not anywhere. Always redirect HTTP to HTTPS. Enable HSTS headers to tell browsers to only use secure connections. One leaked password over unencrypted traffic can compromise your entire system. TLS is your first line of defense. Everything else builds on this foundation. API Security Measure 2. Authentication. Authentication answers one question. Who is making this request? Get it wrong, and attackers impersonate legitimate users. The most common approach for APIs is JSON Web Tokens, or JWTs. When a user logs in, your server generates a signed token containing their identity and permissions. The client includes this token in every subsequent request. Your server verifies the signature to confirm the token is genuine and hasn't been tampered with. JWTs are stateless. Your server doesn't need to store session data, but they have risks. Never store sensitive data in JWTs, since they're only encoded, not encrypted. Always set short expiration times. Implement token refresh flows for long sessions. For third-party integrations, OAuth 2.0 lets users grant limited access without sharing passwords. A user can let your app read their calendar without giving you their Google password. API keys work for service-to-service -service communication, but treat them like passwords. Rotate them regularly. Never commit them to version control. Never expose them in client-side code. Authentication is your identity checkpoint. Every request must prove who's asking. API Security Measure 3. Authorization. Authentication proves who you are. Authorization determines what you can do. These are different problems requiring different solutions. Just because someone has a valid token doesn't mean they should access everything. Broken authorization is the number one API vulnerability, according to OWASP. The attack is simple. A user changes an ID in the request from their own resource to someone else's. Without proper checks, 
your API returns data it shouldn't. User123 requests slash API slash users slash 456 slash documents and sees another user's private files. This is called Broken Object Level Authorization, or BOLA. Every endpoint must verify. Does this authenticated user have permission to access this specific resource? Role-based access control helps at a high level. Admins see admin endpoints. Users see user endpoints. But you also need object-level checks. Just because you're a user doesn't mean you can see all user data. Implement authorization middleware that runs on every request. Check ownership. Check permissions. Check roles. Trust nothing. Verify everything. The authenticated user is not the authorized user until you've confirmed it. API Security Measure 4 – Rate Limiting Rate limiting controls how many requests a client can make in a given time period. Without it, attackers overwhelm your system. They brute force passwords trying thousands of combinations per second. They scrape your entire database one request at a time. They launch denial-of-service attacks that crash your servers. Here's how rate limiting works. You define a threshold, say 100 requests per minute per user. Request 101 gets blocked with a 429 too many requests response. The client must wait until the window resets. Implement rate limits at multiple levels. Per endpoint, your login endpoint might allow only five attempts per minute since nobody legitimately fails login that often. Your search endpoint might allow 60 requests per minute. Per user or IP, each client gets their own quota. One abuser doesn't affect everyone else. Globally, protect against distributed attacks where thousands of IPS each send a few requests, collectively overwhelming you. Use a sliding window algorithm for smooth limiting or a token bucket for burst tolerance. Always return rate limit headers so clients know their remaining quota. Good rate limiting protects your API without frustrating legitimate users. API Security Measure 5 Input Validation Never trust user input. Every piece of data from outside your system is potentially malicious until proven otherwise. Input validation is your first filter. Define exactly what valid input looks like. An email field should match email format. An age field should be a positive integer. A username should contain only alphanumeric characters. Reject anything that doesn't match. Validate on the server, never just the client. Client-side validation improves user experience but provides zero security. Attackers bypass it trivially. Use strict schemas. If your API expects a JSON object with specific fields, reject requests with extra fields. This prevents mass assignment attacks, where attackers add fields like Jasmine to their profile update. Validate types, lengths, formats, and ranges. A product quantity should be a positive integer, not negative, not a million, not a string. Set reasonable maximums for string lengths to prevent memory exhaustion. Allow list, don't block list. Define what's permitted rather than trying to block what's dangerous. Block lists always miss something. Input validation won't stop sophisticated attacks alone, but it eliminates the vast majority of malformed and obviously malicious requests before they go deeper into your system. API Security Measure 6 Injection Prevention Even with input validation, injection attacks require special attention. Injection happens when user input becomes executable code. The classic example? A login query that concatenates user input directly. Select star from users, where username equals quote, then the input, then quote. An attacker enters admin quote, or quote one equals one. Your query becomes 
select star from users, where username equals admin or one equals one. Since one always equals one, this returns all users. The attacker just bypassed authentication with a carefully crafted string. Injection can do far worse. Attackers can read your entire database schema. They can extract every table. They can modify or delete records. They can execute system commands if your database permissions are misconfigured. The fix is simple and absolute. Never concatenate user input into queries. Use parameterized queries or prepared statements. The database treats parameters as data, never as executable code. Most ORMs handle this correctly by default. No SQL databases are vulnerable too. MongoDB queries accept objects, and attackers can manipulate query operators. Always validate and sanitize input for no SQL databases just like SQL. One injection vulnerability can expose your entire database. API Security Measure 7 Cores Cores controls which websites can call your API from a browser. Without proper configuration, malicious sites trick users into making authenticated requests to your API. Here's the threat. A user visits evilsite.com while logged into your application. Evilsite.com's JavaScript tries to call your API. If your API allows requests from any origin, the browser sends the request with the user's cookies attached. Your API sees valid authentication and processes the request. The attacker just acted as that user. Browsers enforce cores through pre-flight requests. Before sending certain requests, the browser asks your API, is this origin allowed? Your server responds with access control agent headers listing permitted domains. If the requesting origin isn't listed, the browser blocks the request entirely. Configure cores strictly. Whitelist only your legitimate front-end domains. Never use wildcard asterisk for APIs with authentication. Be specific about allowed methods and headers. Remember, cores only protects browser-based requests. API calls from servers bypass cores entirely. You still need authentication and authorization. Cores is one layer of browser-specific protection, not a complete security solution. API Security Measure 8 CSRF Protection CSRF exploits the browser's automatic cookie attachment. When you visit any website, your browser automatically sends cookies for any domain those requests target. Attackers exploit this with forged requests. You're logged into your bank, authenticated via session cookie. You visit a malicious page containing a hidden form that submits to your bank's transfer endpoint. The form auto-submits via JavaScript. Your browser attaches your bank's session cookie automatically. The bank sees a valid session and processes the transfer. You just sent money to the attacker without realizing it. The defense is CSRF tokens. When your server renders a form, it generates a unique random token and embeds it in the form. When the form submits, the server validates that the token matches the session. The attacker's page can't read this token due to same origin policy. Without the valid token, forged requests fail. For APIs using JWT tokens in headers instead of cookies, CSRF is less of a concern since headers aren't attached automatically. But any API using cookie-based authentication needs CSRF protection. The same site cookie attribute provides additional defense by restricting when cookies are sent cross-origin. API Security Measure 9 – XSS Prevention XSS lets attackers inject malicious scripts that execute in other users' browsers. The attack vector? Your API accepts and stores user content without sanitization. A comment field. A profile bio. A product review. An attacker submits content containing a script tag. Your API stores it. When other users load that page, the attacker's JavaScript executes in their browser with full access to that page's context. The script can steal session tokens and send them to the attacker. 
It can modify page content to display fake login forms. It can make API requests as the victim. It can spread by posting more malicious content as each infected user. Stored XSS persists in your database, affecting every visitor. Reflected XSS bounces malicious input off your server in error messages or search results. DOM-based XSS manipulates client-side scripts. Defense requires multiple layers. Sanitize all user input before storage. Encoded output when rendering to HTML. Use content security policy headers to restrict which scripts can execute. Set HTTP only on cookies so JavaScript can't read them. Never insert user content directly into JavaScript code. XSS vulnerabilities can compromise every user who visits an affected page. API Security Measure 10 Security Headers Security headers are low-effort, high-impact defenses. They tell browsers how to handle your content securely. Content security policy is the most powerful. It specifies exactly which sources can provide scripts, styles, images, and other content. A strict CSP prevents XSS by blocking inline scripts and restricting script sources to your domains only. Even if an attacker injects code, the browser refuses to execute it. X content type options with value no sniff prevents browsers from guessing content types. Without it, attackers can trick browsers into executing uploaded files as scripts. X-Frame Options prevents your pages from being embedded in iframes on malicious sites. This blocks clickjacking attacks where users think they're clicking on one thing but actually interact with your hidden page. Strict Transport Security tells browsers to only use HTTPS, even if users type HTTP. X-XSS-Protection Enabled Legacy XSS filters in older browsers. Referrer policy controls what URL information is shared when users navigate away. These headers take minutes to implement and block entire categories of attacks. Configure them on your web server or in your application. Test with security header scanning tools. Every production API should have a complete set of security headers configured correctly. You now understand the 10 pillars of API security. Let's turn that knowledge into action. Start with a security audit of your existing APIs. Check HTTPS everywhere, no exceptions. Review your authentication. Are tokens expiring? Are secrets properly stored? Test your authorization. Can users access resources they shouldn't? Try changing IDs in requests against your own API. Verify rate limiting. Can someone brute force your login, scrape your data, crash your servers with traffic? Audit your input validation. What happens when you send unexpected types, extreme lengths, or special characters? Check your headers. Run your API through a security header scanner. Most issues are one-line fixes. Review your dependencies. Outdated libraries are a leading cause of breaches. Automate security testing. Add static analysis to your CI pipeline. Run dependency vulnerability scans on every build. Include security tests alongside functional tests. Security isn't a one-time task. New vulnerabilities emerge constantly. Subscribe to security advisories for your tech stack. Schedule regular security reviews. The attackers never stop probing. Neither should your defenses. Every technique in this video is battle-tested. Implement them consistently, and you'll block the vast majority of attacks. Your users trust you with their data. That trust is earned through the security practices you build into every line of code. 